All right, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about a simple Atwood's machine. And uh, this is a classical physics problem. And I'm going to deal with an Atwood's machine that's going to deal with a uh, rope that has no mass and a pulley that has no mass. In other words, there's going to be no moment of inertia. It's a very basic application of this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a, a rotating pulley here. Or a wheel that rotates, it's not going to have any mass. And I'm going to hang from that, uh, I'm going to hang a couple of masses from that. So let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, like that. So masses are going to hang like this, and like this. I'm going to make them different masses, obviously, because we want this to move and pivot. So I'm going to make different size boxes here. So let's make this the big box, and this the little box, like this and such. All right, so bear with me while I fill this. So with the, the whole purpose of this is to determine the acceleration of the system, and then maybe we want to calculate the tension in the ropes of the system here, okay? So here's what I'm going to do on this problem. I'm going to just define some parameters here. I'm going to say that this is going to be, this rotating wheel here is going to be massless and uh, the rope is also going to be massless. So massless uh, pulley and a massless rope. Okay, so those are some important things to assume here. And I'm going to say that I'm going to have a 5 kilogram object here and a 10 kilogram object here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is I want to find two things. Okay, I want to find the acceleration of the system and I'm also going to find the tension in the system. So this uh, pulley system here, there's one continuous rope here. I know it doesn't look like it, but there's one continuous rope. And that rope wraps all the way around like this. And this object is mounted to a wall, this yellow pulley, and it's going to start to move. This 10 kilogram object is going to move down. And the tensions, they're going to share the tensions here uh, in this rope. OK, they're going to share the tensions. So you're going to have. Uh, force of tension here and the force of tension here. Since this has no mass, the tensions are going to be the same. Okay, so that's an important concept. But the first thing I want to find is the acceleration. So I'm going to find the acceleration of this system. And the way that I do this is I'm going to do something kind of nifty here. I'm going to take the axis and I'm going to basically bend it around like this. I'm going to say, okay, that's my y axis. In other words, I'm going to bend it around and I'm going to take these objects like this and I'm going to extend them out, which I'll show you in a minute here. Take these two objects. And I'm going to extend them out like this, and as if they were on a straight line. OK, so then I'm going to go like this, across here. And in other words, if I took this big axis like this, you see how that's one big axis? I'm going to make that one axis going this direction. OK, so there's your y-axis in this direction. So just I say that's my y-axis, OK? So basically, what we have here is I have a force of gravity from this one of the 10. And I have a force of gravity from the 5, like this. And those are going to basically give me a net force, OK? It's going to give me a net force. And then they're going to give me a net acceleration of the whole system. So the important thing about this is that they are going to share the acceleration. They're both going to share and have the same acceleration. So I take this like this, and I'm going to define a boundary around this. Let's say I make this, uh, this is my boundary right here, OK? That these two objects are going to share the acceleration. And these added up are going to give me one equivalent mass, and if I took the whole thing, I would have like uh, the equivalent of a 15 kilogram object like this. I'm going to have an MA net. Now, all that I did was I basically took this as one big system of 15 kilograms, and it's going to have a net force in that direction. Why? Because the 10, ki the 10 kilogram force of, of gravity is going to be more than the 5. Okay. Now, real quick, when I calculate this acceleration, what's one thing we know about the acceleration? Well, I know the acceleration has to be between 0 and it has to be between 9.8. Why? 
because 9.8 would be if this was in free fall. It's not in free fall, right? Because this is a counterweight slowing it down. And zero would be if they were both the same weight. So my answer has to be between zero and 9.8. Just want to point that out first of all. So I'm going to apply Newton's law here, Newton's second law, sum of the force y equals m a net. I'm going to put m total a net. So I have this force here. I have force of gravity of the 10 minus force of gravity of the 5 equals m total a net. And I'm going to use some approximations here. I'm going to say, okay, so this is going to be mg minus mg equals m total a net. So this mass right here is going to be the 10 kilogram mass, 10, and then g is going to be 10 minus 5 times 10. And that's going to equal the total mass, which is 15 times a net. Okay, so what am I going to end up with here? Well, I'm going to have, 10, I'm going to have 100 minus 50 equals 15 a net. So my a net, my net acceleration of the system is going to be 50 divided by 15. So 5 goes into 50, 10, right? And 5 goes into 15, 3, right? So that's going to give me 3.3. Uh, repeating, if you want to use two significant digits, we'll use two, 3.3 meters per second squared. Now, is that answer in the reasonable realm of explanation? It is, because I said that my acceleration has to be between 0 and 9.8, and it is, it's 3.3 meters per second. So that's how we would find the acceleration of the system. The whole thing accelerates at the same pace because they're connected by the same wire, or the same rope here, right? And so we just said Newton's second law, sum of the forces, equals m total a net, and then I was able to go ahead and solve it out, and I got 3.3 meters per second squared. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to find the tension in the rope from this system.